Ok, malta. Agora vou fazer aqui um switch do português para o inglês. O português correu assim mais ou menos. Vamos ver como é que isto agora vai dar no inglês. Uh, so, right now we, we are going to have Uros Tacit, right? Yes? Perfect. And uh, Uros is the, from Serbia, is the tech leader of uh, Maximer, a company from Nor Norway. Uh, Uros uh, wears the programming hat, uh, especially WordPress development. And uh, uh, he also loves uh, food, travel, socializing and cooking. So. Uh, very interesting, the cooking. So, uh, since 2018, uh, he uh, uh, became more involved with the WordPress community and uh, is also a member of the WordCamp Europe. Urus Tasic, everyone. Thank you for a good introduction. So my name is Uros Tasic. I'm a tech lead and WordPress developer in a Norwegian company called Maximer. I'm also a organizer of WordCamp Europe for a lot of years. There are a couple of my bosses that I want to say thank you for the WordCamp. One is Jose and another one is Juan. They are in the front row. So yeah, thank you for the opportunity and yeah. Today we are going to talk about Woo performance and optimization. Before I start, I would just want to mention that all talk is going to be based on the results that we concluded after the couple of months of testing. And we will get to the point of how many products and what kind of server is for testing. So... Is it me or it doesn't work? Yeah, the next one. Can you try it then? Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, just to be on the same page, today we are going to talk about the profiling and mostly about profiling the PHP code and MySQL code. If you're interested in core web vitals, there is another talk at 2 o'clock or 2.30 that my friend Sabrina is going to give. And then all the JavaScript and caching and front-end performance, Samuel already gave a talk about the Gutenberg blocks, so that is also very nice for, uh, for performance. So basically there is a definition, but we are going to focus on how to fix bottlenecks and a slow code that is executing on your site. First, the tools I use in day-to-day -day job and my one and only goal for today is to make you try at least one of the tools that are mentioned there. Uh, also, I'm not using one, I use them in combination and just a short explanation. I'm pretty sure that mo that people that are developers here are mostly known for the xdebug and that is the easiest way to debug something. And you can use it when you're trying a new feature, trying a new function or whatever, but there are more complex and better tools like Blackfire and New Relic. Uh, New Relic, you can use it for production sites and it will do the profiling in real time and you can get a lot of information that we're going to talk a little bit later. And for Blackfire, I have two examples that I want to show you how you can use it to see if your code is slow or if it has any issues on the website. Of course, there are many more tools and one note here that you need to be careful putting those tools on a production because those two can also slow down your site. So you need to take that in consideration. How did you move? This is the other side. Yeah. I can use the mouse. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, why you should profile code? And this is very important for developers, for the girl team. And my colleague this morning gave a good talk about the uh, SEO and why technical SEO is important. And it is important because if you profile a code, if you find something that is slow and you fix it, you will 
be uh, good for scale and you can get more users and Google will rank you better for your site. But also you need to convince your client and your manager that you need to spend additional time and from them to pay you additional time so you can profile and find the issue. And again, uh, when we define an issue, this is not a critical issue. The site can work without profiling, but then you are giving a client some site that can maybe withstand one or 100 users. You don't know that. Even if we know that uh, blocks are scalable and very performant, you still do not know tomorrow if it's a big sale, if that site is going to survive or not. Also, the one and only reason, and I think it's the most important, but that's my opinion, is to learn. Because if you're a developer, you need to challenge yourself to write more performant code than just using it or just, I found this function or I found this MySQL query, let's copy paste, it is working, I solved the problem. Potentially, and in 85% of the cases, you did not solve a problem, you created even bigger problem. I mean, if you want to take more money, that's good. But again, I would strongly recommend that everything you do related to PHP and MySQL, you first test that and then put it on production. Also, one more thing, uh, guesswork. I put it like that because in most time we are doing some features or we are creating something and we are guessing that that is performant or, or, or that that is doing good. And the best definition and developer will know when you say the site went down because of the loss of users and the developer will say, but this worked on my computer and it's still working. But on your computer, you are the only one visiting the site and there are less things on your computer than on a real site. So don't do the guesswork. Be sure that you, when you do a feature that it can withstand certain criteria. When we do a profile, and this is the last slide with the theory, because I don't like it as well, but just to be on the same page. So what does profiling include? And usually when we talk about PHP and MySQL, we would, we would like to know how many CPU power and how many memory our code or our function is using. This also applies to any WP CLI commands that you have on a site because you need to test them as well. Because the site can work if you visit a site, but then there is a WP CLI command that is doing something every two hours and every two hours the site goes down. So that also needs to be tested because that is also a part of the site, even if it doesn't load on every page. Uh, also, uh, when we talk about the resource usage, you need to be aware that you are paying your hosting and there are a lot of good hosting companies here also, and they are going to provide you a better or maybe more expensive one because your site is struggling. But if you do it properly, you can reduce the resource use and then you can stay on the same hosting plan and save some money. But yeah, I'm not saying that you should not go to the <laughs> better hosting, but yeah. Uh, now, some geeky stuff. Uh, the setup that this uh, test is uh, conducted is, you can see the versions, I don't need to go to there. I know that some of you are going to say, but those are not the newest version of WordPress and WooCommerce. I know, we are doing a new research currently, so the slides will be updated, but I have a couple of things to point there. And also, I know that there are different ways to host a WordPress site, but this is on one droplet. This is the just information what it has. And of course, you can have multiple ones and the speed will be better or not. But for the example, this is going to be uh, efficient. Now, the image below is taken from the Blackfire software. So I compared two functions and we're going to talk about them, but then I will explain a couple of things. So if you use the WooCommerce, you would know that the, uh, when you create a product, the ID is only for us developers, for the end user or the client, they have SQU and based on that, you can search a product on the website or wherever you need it. In this case, 
the simple example is that the first function is coming from WooCommerce, uh, and you can see it is get product ID by SKU. And below that, there is this time that if you call that function and you measure, you can measure it with micro time, you can measure it with any software you want. The easiest way to check this is just to do PHP micro time and calculate this. But you see that it's 1.8 seconds and below, and I will explain why I use the MySQL query. I'm doing the same thing, but I'm just getting the data from the WP post meta table. It is, if you see, 10.8 seconds. And first, I will say a disclaimer here. If you install it fresh WooCommerce with WordPress, these are not the times there. Why? Because the freshly installed WooCommerce doesn't have any product, any order. It is the empty site. This test is done on 1.4 million products in a database and with 200,000 orders in a database. If you're a developer, you would know that all of the data for the product and for the orders are stored in WP Post Meta table. And this example is that many of the plugins that are doing something with the product or with the custom post types or whatever, they are going to search the data here. So if we uh, try to do the same example with the meta key that is something else, you will get the similar 10 seconds on this site, which is not good. Because if whatever, imagine searching for a product and the uh, end user needs to wait, in this case, at least 10 seconds for this information. And we usually need more information. So below is just the comparison because the black fire can do the comparison be between first code and the second code because you do multiple profiles and there is a compare with the button and you will get if you made it better or worse because we can make things even worse. <laughs> that is life. Uh, one example that is not here and this is the improvement of 75%. Then another example just to see that for one problem there are multiple solutions the another example that can speed up this to 85 or 90 percent is that we don't use the default woocommerce function because that function is doing a couple of additional checks that maybe you don't need you can search for uh, from the product lookup table if you do that in this case the code will be even more performant and then if you include some caching that came from wordpress 6.1 with the default function, you can improve this even below 0.5 seconds. Uh, and the biggest take from this is that sometimes the function that is coming with the plugin or the software is maybe good for a smaller site and it, it will do everyday task or a job, but sometimes you need to find it and you need to know how to change it or how to improve that code. Of course, this is the easy example. It's not always easy. If you work with WooCommerce, you will know that there are a couple of queries that are joining with terms and other things. So you need to play around with it. And just, ju just to explain one thing, this cannot be solved with a caching plugin. So you cannot solve this kind of the issue with a caching plugin. You can prolong it, but in the end of the day, you will get uh, issue with this. Also, one good thing that from WooCommerce 8.2, uh, the default way for orders is high performance storage. And if you never checked it, they are not storing the data anymore in WP Post Meta. They have their own table. And you, if you compare it with that way of working, you will also get 40 to 45% better performance for orders than if uh, if you do not use the new feature. Uh, and now you're going to say, but orders, what does the end user? This is only when you order something and go to the order page. Uh, there are a lot of functions that are hooked to add to cart that are relying on the order table, or if you don't have that feature, it will uh, rely on post meta. And in most of the cases that we did study, when you click add to cart, it can go from 0 0.5 seconds to 
six, seven, eight seconds just to add a product into the cart. And then if you are scared why people are not buying, maybe because they need to wait a lot of time for that product to go to cart. So this is uh, that example. Also, again, a big disclaimer because someone is going to say then the simplest solution is don't you don't use the default function don't use post meta get the newest version go to the product lookup table and we we fixed everything we did not fix everything with that uh, first of all because another test that we did if you have a small amount of products small amount of orders fetching data for from product lookup table is slower than using the wp uh, WC get product ID by S. So there are particular cases where you can use this and where you cannot use this. And the, this is my point that you cannot just blame one function. You need to see how it beca uh, behaves on your site. And that's why the goal is to, for not every change, but for every bigger change, you profile a code, even with the micro time from PHP. This is the two lines of code that you can add and check or if there are experienced developers and want to uh, to do it this on the automated way all of the tools can be put it in the pipelines or the continuous integration and on every push or commit you can get the results you can compare the code and see if you made a mistake and the point is even if the, the even if the site goes slower after the adding a feature that doesn't mean that you are a bad developer. That just means that you need to spend a little more time to improve that code and to get back from a couple of slides back. That is the learning process. If we start doing that, all the plugins, the whole WordPress and WooCommerce can be faster, but we need to do that. And we need to go and say, you can contribute that. Yesterday was a contributor day. If you find something like that, you can go to the table and say, I think this can be better. How? Because I tested it. This is a small motivational. <laughs> uh, everybody can do this. I did, uh, I did a test in my company. You, you can teach a project manager that is not technical how to run the profile test. And maybe they will not understand from the what are the numbers? Is this the disk CPU memory? What is the memory? Can we add more memory? But they will see green and red and then they will do something about it. But to run a test, you don't need to be technical. You can just this is like a simple click of a button. There is an interface. You don't need to be a skilled DevOps or whatever. There is the simple UX one button and you can see this and then you will have a person saying why is this green and why is this red and can we do something about it so yes you can do it and it's not only that you can do it but you need to do it you need to do this as a routine you need to do it every day I mean not every day for on weekends you don't develop anything on Friday you don't push anything on production even if it's a good code yeah that's a Basic rule, but again, nobody is following it. But just like if you start doing it once a month, or if you start doing it once in a three months, it's going to be a start. Because yeah, small steps to a better results. And this doesn't have anything. This is not if you're talented or not. This is just I will do this and I will see. Maybe you will you will not have hours to fix it or there is no time to do it you can deploy it like that but you will know where is the bottleneck and when you have time you can try to fix it thank you very much and yeah. <laughs> What's next? any questions no questions? Oh, sorry. Hi, Oresh. Really good talk. Uh, my question would be, if, you, if we talk about optimizing WooCommerce sites, is there a list of things you would do in 
almost every case, go through it and see the results and see what you can optimize. I mean, again, the answer would depend on the site, but as a, I would like for WooCommerce also to have it like a simple things to just profile front page, one category page, one single product page with variation or without variation and the whole flow from adding to cart to the checkout. So, because that is also sometimes a big bottleneck, as I said, it's maybe not the checkout issue, but it's the issue when you click add to cart, go to the end of process, it can take more than one minute or two minutes. We experience that and that is maybe a big no-no for a client. So, front page, category page or a shop page, single product page and add to cart. The whole process from picking one product and finishing the checkout. Hi, thank you for your talk. Hi. Um, I have two questions. Um, first, um, do you implement all the do commerce for your customers or you take stores from uh, other agencies that implemented it? I mean, not all the agency will share the code and that is bad thing for open source. But yeah, if I find something that is good, when I test it, I can always use that. Like this can be public and it is public. I have it. But again, I don't know many agencies that are sharing the performance code and say, no, no. I, I was talking about, uh, so if you do that profiling in, um, in stores that were set up by other agencies okay. that you catch the customer, for example, or if you only do for new setups that you do in your agency? Oh, you can do for all the setups and we are doing for the setups. It doesn't need to be code made by us. I do this for not every version of WooCommerce, I, but we test for like any bigger update on the WooCommerce, you need to retest it because maybe they fix something, but maybe they make something worse. So yeah, it doesn't need to be only our code, but again, WooCommerce is our code because it's open source, so you can do it for uh, just uh, another co another question. Um, how do you do or how do you hack when you see, for example, code snippets for a plugin uh, that interacts with the commerce? Uh, how do you approach the company that did the product that that did the plugin um, to fix some some issue with the code snippet, for example, that is slowing down the store? So. I would like for all the plugins to have a filter or action that you can hook and then fix it like that. So you don't break the future updates. That is not always the case and that is a struggle. So you either need to change it in a code or write it to their support saying they don't need to fix it. You can give them a fix if you have, or just advise them, please add a filter or action because this is the common developer handbook that you need to have it so we can override it. And then I would also love when someone fix something like that to say to that plugin owner or a company or whatever it is, this is the fix we think it will work, but you cannot say it like that because you need to cover the cases. But if we share more of those things, then again, we would have a better life cycle of plugins and code in the WooCommerce or WordPress, whatever is the same thing. But firstly, I would say, please add filter or action. And secondly, if we fix it, here is the fix. You either use it or not, but we have a filter and we can use it on, on our own. Thank you. Okay, one more. Um, uh, sorry, Urs. I, 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 was, I did not understand something in your presentation and it's why is the pH code more performant than the SQL code? Because shouldn't the PHP code call SQL? I mean, the PHP function is not calling SQL in the background to do the query for you. There is some caching mechanism. I, I think it's, yeah. it's my ignorance of, of how uh, the, the current WordPress works. And I'm first I'm of all, there is a caching there in that function. Okay. There is a caching in there. They're, they're fetching data for from product lookup table from a point something. And that's why it's performant than the post meta table. 
Yeah. If you have questions, I will be around. And yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.